The National Football League in crisis mode. Has it done enough to address domestic violence? No, says a leading women's group in the U.S. We talk to its president. Also, Canadian football players weigh in. We talk to Anthony Parker of the Calgary Stampeders. I'm Afan Chaudhary. Welcome to Globe Now. The National Football League has a domestic violence problem. The league's commissioner, Roger Goodell, said as much last week. But the calls for his resignation continue. The league has been in damage control ever since video emerged of football player Ray Rice brutally beating his then fiance. That beating left her unconscious. Ray Rice has been suspended indefinitely. The NFL has a new domestic violence policy. And it's just not enough, say women's groups. The National Organization for Women is one of those groups. Its president is Terry O'Neill, and we've reached her in Washington, D.C. Hi, Terry. Hi, how are you? Very good. What do you want to see happen? Well, we have said that Roger Goodell must resign and that his successor must appoint a truly independent investigator that will go in and have full power to ask all the questions to unpack what it is that's going on at the NFL that makes it so unable to respond appropriately when domestic violence incidents or family violence incidents happen within its community. So it's more than just his resignation that you're asking for? Frankly, I haven't seen a lot of leadership coming out of the team owners who sort of act as they hire and fire the commissioner, right? The leaders of the league seem to keep treating domestic violence when it happens within their community as an inconvenient PR problem. Okay. And they keep doing things to fix their PR problem. And the reason it's not working is that they don't have a PR problem. They have a domestic violence problem. Okay. They need to respond to it. I mean, we've seen the NFL announce the appointments of four women to shape new policies on domestic violence. How much does that satisfy your concerns about the NFL not doing enough? Uh, the appointment of these four women raises more questions than it answers. For example, how much advice has the NFL brass received about domestic violence over the years? Clearly, they haven't listened to that advice or taken it seriously or implemented it. So, so, so the question in my mind is, do we have any reason to believe that Roger Goodell will actually implement any of the recommendations that these four women uh, bring to him? I think we have lots of reasons to believe he will not mm -hmm. and no reasons to believe that he will. Terry, we're talking about the NFL commissioner, but there are other major p players. There are the owners, the sponsors. What role should they be playing, I wonder? You know, I would hope that uh, at least some critical mass of the uh, team owners would get together and try to figure out a, a, a sensible way forward, a workable way forward. The sponsors are very much a part of the NFL community, and they are very powerful a part of the NFL community. I would hope that the sponsors would be part of the solution. And I think that, that they really ought to recognize that the NFL needs a whole new leadership structure and a serious commitment to responding appropriately to domestic violence. I mean, looking at the reaction of players, owners, sponsors, and ordinary people in society, I mean, what tells you that this time things are going to be different when it comes to making the changes to end domestic violence? The public understands that there is a need for serious change. And, um, and I think that the leadership is going to be sort of the laggards, the laggards here. They're going to be coming along after. I think public opinion is, uh, is very powerful here. I think fans are now it's harder to sit down and just enjoy the fabulous football. Although arguably, you know, viewership has not dropped since this scandal broke. I would say yet. Um, I, I don't think that Roger Goodell is going to continue to be the commissioner of the NFL very long. And I will say this, if he does continue to be the commissioner, I think it's all but certain that another domestic violence incident will happen. It will be responded to in the same old bad way, and we will be right back where we started from. And that's why they need new leadership. Terry, thank you so much. Thank you. Well, we want to hear from you. What do you think needs to happen in the NFL to end domestic violence? Tweet us at Globe Now.
Well, we're talking about the National Football League. Here in Canada, football players are taking their anti-domestic violence message to schools. This is an initiative between Alberta's two CFL teams and the Alberta Council of Women's Shelters. And it's happening around the same time that the NFL is struggling with the issue of domestic violence in the wake of the Ray Rice scandal. Well, one of those players is Anthony Parker, wide receiver with the Calgary Stampeders, and we've reached him in Calgary. Hi, Anthony. Hey, how's it going, Afan? Very good. Why was it important to you to get involved at this point? Um, well, you know, I got involved a few months back, and, uh, you know, it's interesting because I think that everybody kind of understands uh, domestic violence is an issue, but it's one of those issues where um, it's easy to say, you know, that's happening wherever it's happening, but it's not happening here, and kind of brush it under the rug. Um, <clears throat> but for me, I think that, you know, understanding what the issue is, um, made it really easy for me to jump into it. And then on top of that, uh, my family directly, um, both, uh, both my uh, mother-in-law and my mother and my wife as well have uh, been directly affected by domestic violence. Uh, so therefore, you know, for me, it was really easy to, to jump into it and get involved. Hmm. I mean, tell me about the initiative. What exactly will you be doing? Uh, basically, what we're going to be doing is going into schools. Uh, you know, hopefully it'll be a couple schools a week once we get into this off season here. And uh, it's basically delivering a message of what is domestic violence, trying to educate the students and the kids on what, um, what that really is, and then essentially providing people the tools necessary to go out and attack this issue each and every day. Um, because it's not good enough to just to be a bystander and, and say, yeah, I'm against domestic violence, but not necessarily do anything about it. Um, you know, our effort is to, uh, is to help these kids with the tools to go forward and actually make a difference in leading change. You know, I'm curious, Anthony, what kind of conversations have been going on among teammates and in the locker room where you are when it comes to the Ray Rice story and the issue of domestic violence? Um, you know what, I mean, I think that 99% uh, of the guys are, are you know, are 100% against uh, the Ray Rice situation. I think that it's challenging um, in terms of understanding what happened because nobody knows exactly how that issue went down. Um, but that said, I mean, I think that uh, it's been interesting to be able to have this conversation and talk about what should the consequences be and uh, how are people going to react going forward. I mean, the interesting thing about the Ray Rice scandal is that it puts the spotlight on professional sports and football Absolutely. when it comes to domestic violence. Do you think that is fair? Um, I mean, I think that that's part of what comes with the territory. Um, you know, football players have a certain stigma about them in the first place. Um, and I think that, you know, it's an unfortunate thing where this event happens and now we're all painted with that same brush. Anthony, I'm curious, what, what did you learn in the process of educating yourself about domestic violence? You talked about the training that you under underwent. I mean, what surprised you? Um, I think the big thing that surprised me was just how desensitized we are um, as a society uh, to the major gender inequalities that there are. You know, you look at things each and every day. We, we police ourselves to be in, uh, in this little box of what, uh, what a man is supposed to be. And uh, anytime we step outside of that box, um, you know, we're considered to be maybe not man enough or whatever the issue is. So uh, I found that uh, that was the biggest, biggest surprise for me was just these gender inequalities that we take to be uh, just the norm, and uh, really it's not okay, but it's going to be a matter of trying to spread that message. I mean, we're talking about the Ray Rice story, which looms so large. I mean, how comfortable are you with the likelihood that it'll come up in your conversations with some of the young men that you're going to be talking to? Uh, completely comfortable with it. I mean, when we did our launch uh, a couple days ago there, um, we actually we went out of our way to try and bring that story up uh, just so that we could, um, you know, under help the kids understand that we are aware of what's going on uh, in the media. And I think that um, as unfortunate as it is that this issue is happening, uh, I think that it, it worked out to be uh, kind of to our advantage in terms of having the launch uh, almost coinciding with that because now people are interested in the conversation of domestic violence and they want to be able to discuss it more. Uh, and, you know, they kind of already got their, uh, their senses up about it. Okay. Thank you so much, Anthony Parker. Thank you. Well, that's it for today's show. If you've got a moment, hop on to Twitter. Share your stories of programs to end domestic violence in your community. What role should sports athletes play? Tweet us at Globe Now. Thanks for watching. I'm Afan Chaudhry.